the carbs set in mineral spirits overnight. So I'm going to get it out and clean it. First I have to put on these rubber gloves. I am Over the years, I used mineral spirits a lot. I used it to wash parts, I used it to clean brushes, I used it a lot. And I developed an issue that where if I have mineral spirits on my hands, they soon dry out to the point where they start cracking. And that causes real problems because they don't heal up well and it takes me weeks to get it to finally stop cracking. So I'm going to use mineral spirits to clean, but I'm going to wear these nitrile gloves. I have to be careful with this brass float. I want to clean it because I don't want to have all this crap get into the carburetor and plug up the jets, but I certainly don't want to poke a hole in this thing. You can patch them. That's not an easy process but it's made up out of formed brass and soldered together with lead solder. So it is repairable and it's not as important to have it perfectly shiny clean as it is to have it not leak. Now lacquer thinner probably would work better Lacquer thinner has a horrible smell to it. I've never found odorless lacquer thinner. And since I'm working in the basement, I don't want to make the house smell like lacquer thinner. This junk that's on the, the float, I've always heard it called varnish. I don't know if it is varnish or if it's related to varnish. But it has some of the same characteristics. And fortunately, it is dissolved by mineral spirits. There, one piece done. using a brass wire brush and you can see it's in really sad shape but it works and it's not aggressive enough to scratch or damage the mating surfaces of parts and if I don't get too aggressive with the pressure I shouldn't have any problem Now this depression in the float bowl is put in there so that it clears some part of the operating system underneath it. This is the part that goes towards the engine. This drain is on the right hand side. This one on the other hand has no apparent use or need for it to be there so I'm thinking something happened at one point or another and this carb got banged. But it's been worked on several times. The original color was kind of a green. That's the normal color that I see for Generac. And somebody painted it yellow. And I think they spray painted it with a spray can. Because they've got yellow paint all over everything, but not neatly. It wasn't a factory job. It was just somebody with a can of yellow paint. Why would they do that? Well, quite often when you're on a job site, things of any value have a tendency to get up and 
walk away and they grow legs on their own. Having them stand out and be yellow makes identifying them a little easier. Recording the serial numbers and model numbers and that kind of stuff also helps. Locking them up at night probably is a good thing, but some stuff can't be locked up. So we end up with people painting things. It's all right, paint doesn't hurt anything. Especially when it's on the outside of the carburetor. Paint on the inside of the carburetor, different story. Uh, pretty good. Better jump down there in the corner. The other thing that happens is once something is considered to be not useful anymore, they tend to get stuck in a corner. And that gets things piled on top of them and they get bounced around quite a bit. So it's a lot harder on equipment that's been retired. And most of the stuff that comes down here to this shop has been retired. Now, not everything. I have some new tools, but most things have been retired. Been painted black too. The other thing that happens is when something is sold, somebody else wants to put their colors on it, and sometimes that causes it to become a different shade than what it was originally. Sometimes, and I ran into this when I was a boy, some idiot thinks that it's okay to steal something and then just paint it because then it's theirs. See, they've put paint on it. It's now their property. Doesn't work. At least it didn't in the time that I was involved in the process. It wasn't me stealing something. It was somebody else stealing something of mine and painting it. He's long since gone, hopefully to a place that's better than what he came from. So we won't mention who he is. Now I don't have to have everything polished. All I really need to do is make sure that I have all the junk cleaned off so that I have a good smooth flow of air going through the carburetor. And I have the dirt off the outside so that when I paint it, because, you know, I have to make it my colors, then it takes the paint well. I'm hoping that after that set in the mineral spirits for a while, those screws might have loosened up. No guarantees, but no harm in trying. I think they're just going to have to remain stuck. Not being able to remove the choke plate and straighten it. I stuck a screwdriver in there, you just saw, and bent the plate straight so now that it closes like it's supposed to. Not the best way, but it's the way that I got to work with. Now it's time to assemble the carb. New needle valve, old needle valve. Old needle valve has a bit more thread on it, but I don't think that'll matter any because the end, the length, overall length of the needle valve is the same. Take it down until it's seated, and then out one, and one half turns. It's always a good starting point. I don't know why, it's always worked. And here comes the tricky part, at least for me. 
I need to put this little plunger in there. I'm going to put it over that pin. And I know you can't see this because my fingers are covering everything up. Things are pretty darn tiny. There. I slide that down so it sits at the bottom and it goes through maybe if I use a pair of needle nose pliers that will get my big fingers out of the way and you guys can see it Take this, and I have the hole down there in the bottom. Slide that through. That's a lot easier. Then this lightweight spring, not the heavy, the lightweight spring goes on top of that. Then we take that little piece of brass, that little cup piece, and we compress the spring. Slide the brass piece over it while holding the spring down with the brass piece. Believe me, it sounds a lot easier than what it is. There. Popped over. I just have to get that spring situated correctly underneath that brass ring. There we go. Now we've got that little rubber piece on the bottom of the pin so it seats against the bottom of the bowl and we have this piece to push on and drain the bowl. I think if you do that every winter you know, when you're going to put the generator away, or maybe in the spring when you put the generator away. I don't know. But when you don't need the generator for a while, if you drain the float bowl, that gasoline, especially the modern mixes with all the additional materials in it that's supposed to make it better, if it sits for very long, it starts getting... If it sits for very long, it starts generating that varnish. The ingredients in the gasoline start coming out of it. And what I was doing there is I was putting that little spring on. That spring attaches this to the little rubber piece on the bottom of the pin. So it seats against the bottom of the bowl. And we have this piece to push on and drain the bowl. I think if you do that every winter, you know, when you're going to put the generator away, or maybe in the spring when you put the generator away, I don't know. But when you don't need the generator for a while, if you drain the float bowl, that gasoline, especially the modern mixes with all the additional materials in it that's supposed to make it better, if it sits for very long, it starts generating that varnish the ingredients in the gasoline start coming out of it. And what I was doing there is I was putting that little spring on. That spring attaches this to the float. So the needle valve goes up and down with the float. When the Now, someone who did this for a living would have a much better chance of getting this together right the first time.
new gasket because this old gasket is shot and also because I have a new one. Draw this down. Now this needle is in this seat already. One and a half. You want to be careful tightening up something like that because if the needle is sticking through, you don't want to cram that needle down into the seat and destroy the seat. Okay, now I have to put in the idle stop screw. it up a whole lot. I'm just going to have the screw in there touching it. There we go. Carb assembled. Well now the carburetor is all cleaned, rebuilt, and put together. I'm ready to bolt it onto the engine. But that's going to have to wait. I got to make supper. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.